Our second realm is called Adventureland, the base of operations for our camera teams in almost every sector of the world. Within Adventureland is the wonder world of nature's own design, her animal creatures, her fabulous plan of life. Here, too, is a world of unusual people and faraway places. To tell about Adventureland and the stories to come from here is producer Ben Sharpstein. At the present time, we have 30 camera crews operating in various parts of the world, filming stories for our Adventureland shows. Actually, it would be difficult to single out any one of these as being most interesting. But one that is certainly most unusual is this expedition that we have here in the Galapagos Islands, directly on the equator. Just getting there was an adventure filled with hazards. Two men at sea for 25 days. Only 30 feet of boat to furnish transportation, living quarters, and carry supplies for a six-month stay. On their arrival, they were greeted by a welcoming committee. And so, for Conrad Hall, the filming of the Galapagos story began before he even reached the shore. Jack Coffer, the other half of the camera team, is recording the amazing story of the giant land tortoise, putting on film the life history of a rare and all but extinct specimen. Another species peculiar to the islands is a marine iguana, the only seagoing lizard. He lives on land and feeds exclusively on seaweed, a living reminder of the age of dinosaurs. He's equally at home on land or in the water. In the Atlantic Ocean, 500 miles off the coast of South America, are the windswept, treeless Falkland Islands. Sewell Pettengill is an authority on bird life, but when he attempted to film the curious ways of the penguins, he soon found that he was the object of curiosity. A shaving mirror placed among them to divert this curiosity made matters worse. For now, the penguins had discovered the most fascinating spectacle of all, themselves. And so, it became a matter of patiently waiting until this new interest had worn itself out. To bring you unusual adventure stories from the remote corners of the globe is all a part of our plan. Here in Lapland, deep in the Arctic Circle, our photographers are filming another exciting story. The story of enormous reindeer herds and the people whose lives depend upon them. As the herds migrate from one feeding ground to another, so must the families a people who are literally herded by their cattle. Highlight of the year is roundup time. Here is the reward of a year of hardships and hazards. Meat for the table and hides for a hundred uses. The reindeer supplies all the necessities of life, plus action and drama for Adventureland. Far from the frozen tundra of Lapland are the burning sands of the Sahara. Here in Morocco, another camera team is recording another type of adventure. These are Berber tribesmen, fierce defenders of their homeland, determined guardians of their way of life. Here upon their ships of the desert are the blue men of Morocco, restless wanderers since Bible days, nomads who risk thirst and starvation for the freedom to roam. When tribesmen meet tribesmen upon an oasis, months of hardship are soon forgotten. Privation gives way to primitive expressions of pent-up emotion. These people have chosen this way of life, a life they fight to retain. However, our cameras are fortunate to record customs that have survived the ages, fortunate to have photographed another unusual story about people and places. In Portugal, our cameras are filming an unusual and exciting tradition that is very close to the hearts of the people. This is no ordinary bullfight. This is a contest that matches brute strength against human endurance. 
Apparently, the objective for the bull is to knock the men down in one clean sweep. The men, on the other hand, attempt, as a unit, to overpower the bull and render him harmless. In these encounters, the bull does not lose his life. In fact, as things turn out, the bull gets as much fun out of it as anyone else. scenes from the things to come. For in the four corners of the world, 30 camera teams are filming other exciting and unusual stories. These will all become part of our Adventureland series. Now our third realm is Tomorrowland. Ever since the invention of the bow and arrow, mankind has both worried and been fascinated by the forward march of science. Today, with the recent discovery of tremendous natural forces and their harnessing to man's use, man is still anxious, yet still hopeful. In the programs to come from Tomorrowland, we plan to explore these forces and their use, to find some measure of understanding about the things that lie before us. Here to tell you about our realm of tomorrow is director Ward Kimball. In our new Science Factual series, we will unfold some of the latest plans our scientists have made for the coming conquest of space. For instance, we will actually show you the designing, building, and the launching of the first passenger-carrying rocket ship into outer space. Here's an exploded view of the ship showing how each of the four rocket sections will be used to blast the rocket with its 10-man crew to over 1,000 miles above the Earth. Floating high above the atmosphere, our space pioneers will face situations unknown in our present Earth-bound life. We will illustrate the problems to be encountered with our own specially designed common man. Up in space, with no gravity to hold him down, he won't know which end is up. He will be absolutely weightless. It will not be easy for him to eat, to sleep, or to drink. With their mathematical calculations and rough sketches, scientific advisors have helped our artists create a brand new spacesuit. Built-in construction tools are one of its mechanical features. You will see this suit in action when we show the construction of the first atomic-powered space station. This base, floating a thousand miles above the Earth, will be the jumping-off point for our trip around the moon. Years ago, Jules Verne wrote one of the first space stories in which he fired his heroes to the moon from a large cannon. However, our requirements for a moonship had to be much more modern. Here again, our scientists helped us solve the problem. After the moon trip, our next objective will be the planet Mars. When Galileo constructed the first telescope, he could see only that Mars was round and sort of reddish in color. As telescopes were improved, astronomers began to observe more and more detail on Mars. Through the centuries, many ideas have been advanced as to the possibility of life existing on Mars. Is it animal, vegetable, human, or just plain nothing at all? 
we won't know until we climb aboard our future atomic-powered rocket ship and see for ourselves. The future exploration of our universe and its mysteries will be one of the many adventures in Tomorrowland.